Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Forensic Frenzy's Idaho 4 series. As always, thank you for watching, and I appreciate all of your support. I was asked by Inside Edition to enhance the video of the Idaho murder victims, Kaylee and Madison at a food truck on the night of November 13th. I primarily used a software tool called Phil Shark Skills and it's also audio tools in the dialogue. Luke, TiVo, really solid. <laughs> Yeah, but not So, Joe, how right. close are we to you sitting down on like, Friday nights? I mean, that was a solid rush. It's a good thing that it ended, but this is two. This is a uh, Friday and Saturday in a row. I got to down round one, so I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot, guys. I guess he's gonna fucking need extra slot a second. This bad boy. Tebow's thinking to himself, if I start slowing down on Meg, maybe I'll get to sit down. He's going to try to sabotage me. I actually am it was, one, was wondering if I was going to slow and you were going to switch it back. I was really scared of that. Like, that's what I was scared of. No? Yes, let that be. You guys know, you guys, like, the highest thing time I saw was 13 minutes, which is, I'm very satisfied. You guys have worked on the truck, and Derek and I have been the ones on grill and Mac, and we've had longer ticket times. You're doing well. I'll go ahead and read the video description for you. Inside Edition asked Anthony Nelson audio and video forensic expert at Garrett Discovery to enhance the audio and video of the last recorded moments of two University of Idaho murder victims and another student at a food truck. Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan stopped for mac and cheese after partying at a nearby bar. The video shows Mogan pointing to a man in a hoodie who appeared to have followed them to the truck. Police already announced they cleared the man in the hoodie. Many were having trouble hearing what was being said on the video, and that is why Inside Edition contacted Garrett Discovery. So as you can see, they have 33,000 subscribers. This video has just over 4,000, 4,084 views, and it's been up since December 9th of 2022. Interestingly enough, about a month ago, I came across this document on Reddit. We will not go over this document on this channel. Um, not quite yet anyway, because it goes into a lot. But this document, as you can see, was produced by Garrett Discovery. And I've looked it over several times under the impression that perhaps one of the vested parties hired Garrett Discovery. Garrett Discovery. Good morning. My name is. Yeah. I even called Garrett Discovery. So, more or less, I did bring up the case. They knew what I was talking about. I brought up the defendant. They knew who he was. I brought up the gag order. They knew that that exists. Um, I mentioned the possibility of this having been leaked. They did act as if there may have been a hiring party that may have put this out there. Um, they ultimately asked for me to email them what I had been going over. 
So all in all, I thought that maybe one of the vested parties had actually hired Garrett Discovery. But in this document, there are things that haven't been put out there publicly. So in my last video, I did make the error of saying Instagram um, was an overlap between the defendant and the victims. But in the warrants, I can't actually find one for the defendant. Now this document does insist that Brian Koberger had an Instagram, possibly many, um, that he was following himself on and on one of which he was following the girls on the third floor, Maddie and Kaylee. This was stated in the phone call to Garrett Discovery. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Um, and her response was almost affirmative that that is what the document insinuates. Um, I mentioned the non-dissemination order and that they, you know, if they were hired by like, you know, the family or anything like that, that this is not supposed to be um, put out there by them because they're the agent, the private investigator of the family. Um, but now I'm looking back and I'm kind of wondering if Garrett Discovery was again for a second time or who knows what the number would be, but if they were again hired by Inside Edition. And the reason why I say this is because mainstream media has incessantly had these sources that insisted that Brian Koberger was following one or more of the girls on social media. And the, they never really revealed their sources. And I'm wondering if it's because they have a connection with Garrett Discovery and this is something that they've done for them mm, pro bono for free or whatever, or if it's because they've actually got a connection with Garrett Discovery where they are paying the private investigator to get them information that they cannot get. Um, if that is the case, I don't care. And I will go into this document. <clears throat> But as of right now, I just want to know what you guys think. Being that at the point of the grub truck, Inside Edition seems to have had Garrett Discovery working on things in the Idaho 4 investigation. Do you think that currently this Garrett Discovery document could also potentially pertain to, pertain to Inside Edition having Garrett Discovery look into the Idaho 4 case? Do you think that Garrett Discovery could be mainstream media's sources? Do you think that there is now a potential for a paid private investigator for the mainstream media that is providing them information? If that is the case, because it came from a private investigator, does that make it more or less credible? Additional things that were inside of this document were things like aliases on social media, emails, phone numbers, um, over a, a thousand Instagram, I guess, friends or people he followed on Instagram. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else was there? Uh, there's a bunch of information, but essentially, it seems to me now that maybe this was perhaps all a part of the mainstream mainstream media's narrative. The document is potentially as real as it can be, um, as produced by Garrett Discovery, as finding whatever information they can. Um, but I don't see a warrant for Instagram for Brian Koberger. So it does make me question how they made that discovery. Um, but I am wondering now if Garrett Discovery is the mainstream media's paid private investigator. So what do you think? And if you want to go through this on your own, obviously you can, because I did not like hide the name of the PDF or anything. You can find it online. Um, it is clearly still there. Um, but I did contact Garrett Discovery. They do seem a little concerned. Um, so it may end up coming down. Um, but I also did just contact them because I wanted to, again, gauge 
how concerned they were um, to get a sense for whether or not the document was real. Um, they didn't shun me. They didn't shut me down. Um, they agreed with everything that I said as far as, you know, the non-dissemination order, the case, all that stuff. They knew exactly what I was talking about. Um, and in the end, she did just ask me, can you just send me over the document that you are looking at so that I know which, you know, what you are referring to? Um, and I sent it over to her. And that just leads me to wonder if they have actually put together multiple documents for the media. Um, but she absolutely seemed to know exactly what I was talking about, about the case and all that stuff. Um, I just don't know if she knew that this document was out there available on the internet for people to actually look at. So I think that was more so what was the surprise for her. Um, I don't think that by any means, any private investigator for the media would be bound to um, the gag order. So there's no sense for concern there. Um, but I do wonder if they, were a little alerted by the fact that they have been hired by Inside Edition and I was calling to begin with to find out about the document that they put together for Inside Edition. So uh, cover blown, maybe? Let me know what you think. As always, guys, thank, for, thank you so much for watching.